Hi, this is our video series, Strong, Safe, and True, where we talk about things that can really help your company be safer, better, give your employees the tools to take care of themselves in potentially volatile situations. And today's topic, very big business for us here at Premier Risk Solutions. We're talking about security assessments with a pro at doing security assessments. I have Bill Cooper over here with me today. Hello, Bill. Hi. <laughs> okay, so Bill has an extensive background in law enforcement. You were a retired, you are a retired police chief of three decades. Then you manage corporate security. And now this is kind of your bag. You do all of these types of assessments. And I get these questions all the time from companies saying, you know, what are these assessments? What, what, are, what do they do? What do they get me? But before we get into this, I want you to explain to folks your background and what makes you an expert at these assessments. Okay. Uh, I spent 30 years as a police officer. I retired as the chief of police. Uh, so I was involved in the development and response and management of major incidents uh, pretty much across the board. Uh, I spent 10 years managing corporate security at Microsoft and T-Mobile. Uh, I actually managed operations at T-Mobile in 23 states. I managed executive protection, workplace violence intervention, uh, and the command center. Uh, and then in that experience, I was able to gather many, many opportunities to do assessments of organizations, to do threat assessments, risk assessments, uh, both in the private and the public sector. Uh, and that's what launched me into the Cooper Management Institute is I saw the need for huge numbers of organizations to understand the risks, the threats, and their current status. So that's what I do. You know, and Bill, one thing, and we'll touch on this a little bit as we go through our PowerPoint here. One thing that I always hear is, well, how much is this going to cost me? And the thing with security is you really should be asking, how much is it going to cost me if I don't do something like this, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And the cost of doing one is marginal compared to the loss that you may sustain if something actually does happen and you didn't do it. Yeah, because okay. When, when something happens and litigation ensues, organizations in a courtroom won't be asked what they did. They will be asked what they should have done. Yeah. Uh, and therein lies the need. Yeah, because then you can hand the assessment over, you've completed the actionable items and you have proof that you weren't negligent and that you did do what you should have done. Correct. Okay, so let's get into the uh, meat of all of this. What is an assessment? How would you describe what an assessment is to folks, Bill? It's essentially an audit or review of an organization and it's conducted to identify weaknesses, internal and external threats and risks with the ultimate goal of establishing mitigation strategies. How do we prevent, how do we mitigate issues like this? And I would imagine to do this, you have to kind of have carte blanche to talk to everybody, right, at that company. That's another question we get, like, who do you need to speak with? And it's pretty much all departments, right? Yeah, you look at key people from the organization and you interview them. There are key questions that, that can be asked. Uh, and then you look at policy and procedure manuals. You listen, look at organizational hierarchy charts. You look at the organization essentially top to bottom. Okay. And you have on here, um, sometimes an assessment is conducted from an attacker's perspective. Kind of explain that for us. Sure. If, if I'm going to attack an organization, if I'm going to attack your business, then I want to know, A, how I can, how I can uh, get into it. What am I looking for? How do I find it? What are the employees? What is the protocol? What is the protocol they follow, if any? If I get in, where do I go? What do I do? How do I get out? How do I extract what I need? So it's, if I look at, if I own the company and I look at it for how can I be attacked, that's the premise from which I want to start an assessment. Okay. And then from there, you determine kind of what needs to happen, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, you, you want to know where is the organization today? What is its current status from a security perspective? Where does it need to go? And how does it need to get there? So the assessment does that, but then provides recommendations uh, for the actions that need to be taken to get where it needs to go, ideally in a priority array. 
And of course, if someone's paying the price of an assessment, they want to know what's included in it. Correct. Uh, and if they know there are four things in an assessment that uh, they need to actually look at. One is what are all the critical assets in the organization? Why does the organization exist? What are the critical assets to it? What, what are the assets that may be targeted, including its people, uh, including its staff? Then we look at number two, what is its current status? What security does it have? What does it need? How is the organization vulnerable? And how would we go about trying to get in if we wanted to do that? The third one is what are the threats and risks the organization uh, faces today? Uh, you look at what's going on in the world. There's a lot of issues floating around out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only from an information security perspective, but from a physical security perspective. So what threats are out there uh, to the organization and its people and its assets? What are they? Uh, and that's a product of risk. Uh, and so the assessment includes a, comprehens a comprehensive risk program, risk uh, assessment as well. So when we want to look at this, number four then is the key to what are we mitigating? How do we mitigate this? What do we need from a security control perspective? What are the priorities we need to do that? You don't want to attack low hanging fruit because it's easy and cheap. You yeah. want to establish a priority array and the assessor should be helping you do that. What are the policies, procedures, processes, and tools you need to make security work there uh, as a mitigation strategy? And finally, what training do your employees actually need in order to enhance security? Um, a quick example was when I was at Microsoft is our security people on patrol after hours were finding hundreds of unsecured laptop computers. We were losing a few of those and the cost was enormous. Uh, and so we calculated the cost from top to bottom of a lost laptop and it was $10,000, $20,000 by the time it got wow. in. So our guys on patrol created a little reminder card. Uh, and when they finally just put it on the, on the desk and date and time, please secure, it was a very nice card, please secure your assets. Uh, and in three weeks, we reduced that by 99% and kept it there. So there's some of the value proposition that an assessment actually offers as well. That's pretty incredible. You know, speaking of this, someone that has never done an assessment, how would you, like you gave a great example of an asset right there, a laptop computer. Can you give a few more examples of what an asset looks like to companies? Sure, uh, another one we did was uh, we had a number of, server farms, uh, IDF, MDF rooms. If they hit a certain temperature, they cut, they shut down. Uh, and the cost of rebooting those was significant. Uh, and so what our, our guys on patrol did was they three times a day, they checked those. Uh, and if they were overheating, there was a strategy they used to cool it off uh, and involve maintenance, uh, cool it off. We were able to reduce those by 95% and we saved the company, the cost of avoidance there was about $18 million. Uh, and so our value proposition was for every dollar you invested in us, we gave you $2 back. And so there's one of the values of security that we don't do after doing an assessment or an implementation is we do not describe the value proposition that security brings. And we did that that's how we reported to the C-suite and it took off and security got really, really very well thought of and robust as a consequence. Okay, so if, um, you know, if someone in the C-suite is watching this video and they think, well, do I, do I need an assessment? How do, I, how do I know if I need an assessment? And maybe especially like a smaller business, how would you, what would you say to them? There's a number of reasons. Just a couple of quick thoughts would be, they don't have a system. They don't have practices. They don't have procedures. Uh, they may not. They may think they don't need it. Uh, they never thought of it before. Um, they may have been victimized. They may have been the victim, and now they want to do something to prevent the being a victim again. In many cases, they don't understand the risks or the threats they face, or organizations in the area face that may uh, influence them as well. 
they need one, but they don't know what's involved in it. So in many cases, they don't ask. When they do ask, that's where we can really get engaged. And the other one is they're not following legal or regulatory requirements. There are requirements for doing certain security things in an organization. Both the RCW rise go to Washington and OSHA have regulations and laws regarding that. So they may not know that. Uh, and so there's the initial discussion is, do I need one? Uh, and most, most cases you do because you look at regionally where we're at, uh, the level of violence is going up, the uh, crime rates are going up. Uh, and it is what it is, but how do I, as an or organizational owner, how do I protect my company and most assuredly the people that are in it? Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, so if someone's thinking about getting an assessment, how long do they need in advance before they'll actually be able to secure someone that could do an assessment? Like, what do you think? What's the average range? I know for us, it's probably a few weeks. Uh, in my business, if you call, uh, for example, me, uh, yeah. it's done pretty quickly. Uh, yeah. I'm agile enough with the schedule. But if you call me today, I can schedule something usually within a week. Uh, okay. Or so, uh, and then uh, complete it, depending on the size of the organization, complete it in a reasonable amount of time. So like a month or I'm just trying to give people an example of how long from start to finish is, is an in-depth assessment. I give you an example. I just did a school district, uh, and that one really didn't have much. Uh, and so the initial assessment uh, of the school, it said there was a particular school, the school, it's fairly large. The assessment itself took about six hours. Uh, and then preparing the report after that, if they want a written report, uh, preparing the report of that. So the whole thing was done in about eight hours. What usually happens is then I, I get called to go in and walk through the report. And more often than not, I'll get hired back to come back and do the training, the policy writing, the procedure writing. Right, yeah. Depending on the size, it can be done within a couple of weeks. But if it's larger, it may take longer than that. Um, okay. I did, one, I did one a few years ago for Abbott Labs, uh, which is a global organization. And I was in their headquarter, their large production and distribution facility in Columbus, Ohio. And it took a month to do the assessment there and write the report, which was 87 pages long. Uh, so it depends on the size, scale, scope. Sure, uh, and, sure. But you know, the, the approach is typically the same. Okay, and then what? once you're done with the assessment, then what? Well, what I recommend is that in my reporting, I create a priority array. What do they need? In what order do we need to do that? And ideally, if there's a cost to that, what roughly is going to be the cost uh, of doing that? Again, the owners, the managers should not attack easy to fix things first. Uh, they should go after the priorities. What are the biggest priorities? Schools are facing this right now then establish a timeline. How long is this gonna take? Over what period of time? Who is going to do it? Uh, and overall cost. And then again, as you brought up early on and absolutely rightfully so, is what is the cost of not doing it? Because wow. that's exponentially greater than actually doing it and mitigating a lot of your problems. Uh, and so when you look at risk, Risk is a product of threat times vulnerability times consequence. There's a number of ways to calculate it. Uh, on here is what's the likelihood, uh, you establish a value of the likelihood of it happening versus the value of the loss. Uh, and then another one, the probability of loss times the amount of loss. And those are values that the company or the expert can actually help establish as well. So it's mathematical in nature, it can be but it's just risk identification, threat identification, how vulnerable am I to each one of these? Uh, and actually I put a matrix together that lists all the major threats or risks that an organization face. I break those up into natural disasters then man-made disasters. Uh, and when you look at the single biggest issue we face out here in this region, it's an earthquake from a natural Right, perspective. right. When you look at from a man-made perspective, there's a variety of things. So we ask, what are those? And how vulnerable are we to each one of those? And then what are the consequences? Uh, I also discuss 
uh, frequency of occurrence and severity of occurrence as well. Uh, so uh, it's a matrix I put together and I use that to kind of guide the process. Uh, and finally, when you, you manage these, you need to actually turn this into an action plan, which covers the things that I've been talking about here. And then okay. do, it. do it. Do it, get it done. And of course, that's one of our services at PRS. We also do special event security, private investigative services, forensics, um, private security, EP work, executive protection in 70 different countries. If you have any questions about any of our services, there's my information. Please call me, I'm Natasha. Bill, thanks again so much for being with us. We love to educate. We love to give information and help folks out. And I really appreciate you doing that with me today.